<clears throat> Warriors. It is uh, a great, uh, very warm Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. Wednesday afternoon. And we are talking about the hot button topic of emotional eating. So it's been an extremely emotional time over the last few months. We've had a pandemic, once in a generation shut down the economy, uh, uh, protests. There's so much going on. It is uh, a, a crazy, emotionally uh, challenging, challenging taxing time. But uh, the habit of emotional eating uh, probably, if you're on this call, has preceded the recent events. It's been something that you've noticed in yourself, I've noticed in myself, uh, as, as something that we've dealt with as adults. And today, what I want to do is deconstruct a little bit about what is going on with us when we are emotionally eating, doing things unconsciously, in a, in a habit, in an unconscious habit of eating, um, and kind of zoom in a little bit on what the causes are. And the, once we identify the causes, some ideas that we can generate on how to interdict these habit patterns and these thought loops and these, uh, these, these things that kind of keep us in a rut where we're at. So first, let's talk about what, um, what habits are. And, and, and if you've read The Power of Habit or Atomic Habit by James Clear, then they go into extreme detail in here. I'm gonna simplify it. There's four uh, key ingredients to a habit, but I, I actually wanna get even more granular than habit formation because what we're really talking about is how humans create like neuro, neuro pathways for, for firing actions together to solve problems. So like the, the human body, we're basically, we're, um, we're, we're, we're programmed for automaticity. Automaticity, meaning that like the things that we do during the day, we do unconsciously. We, once we learn the type, we don't consciously put, think about where we put our hands. Once we learn how to tie our shoes, we don't have to spend a lot of brain power consciously tying our shoes uh, and, and things like that. So we're, we're basically on autopilot for a lot of the act, actions that we take during the day. And when we are knocked out of our comfort zone or feeling discomfort, I'm gonna use a physical example here for the temperature in the room. So like, if you're in a room and you're reading a book or watching TV, and it gets really, really cold. You only notice that you are, uh, that you're uncomfortable because you're cold. And then you're kind of distracted, pulled out of the, the behavior that you're in to address this discomfort that, we're fa that you're faced with. So uh, when you're feeling uncomfortable because of cold, a lot of times you can go and put on a sweatshirt, you can go to your thermostat, you can use your thermostat to increase the temperature of the room and to alleviate your discomfort with, uh, uh, with the temperature. And so you have, you have an environment, you have a trigger, the trigger is the temperature, and then you have an action to alleviate the discomfort, which is you know, putting on a sweatshirt or adjusting the temperature of the room. And then the, the, the temperature of the room changes and you're comfortable again, and then you don't, you're not aware of the, the air temperature around you anymore. So basically, brain feels discomfort, action to alleviate discomfort happens, and then the faster, the more effective the solution is, the easier it is, the more automated it becomes. So you start to just put a sweatshirt on when you, you know, get home from work, or you turn up the heat when you get home from work, or you, you create a habit or routine or automation around preventing the discomfort, and pretty soon you don't even think about it until one of your friends comes over and says, Josh, why is it 60 degrees in your apartment? I'm like, is that cold? I feel great. So... Uh, you're, you're going you're gonna to automate a behavior to alleviate the discomfort. Now, when it comes to eating, there, what we want to do is we want to enhance our self-awareness around the behavior and the, the, the food that we're eating, in this case, emotional eating, 
We want to enhance our awareness around the food that we're eating and when we're eating it, where we're at, what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, because a lot of those times it's automated. And a, a, simple, a simple action such as carrying around a journal with you and then every time you eat anything, just logging like what you're doing while you're, while you're doing that. So like 8 a.m., coffee, you know, black coffee in the morning. I'm checking my email before my workday starts. You know, uh, sandwich for lunch, you know, 30 minute lunch break, like, like just describing the situation and the, and the context uh, for, for what's happening. So you're, you're, what you're doing is you're taking behaviors and, and moments and environments that are autom automated and unconscious and you're making them conscious. So there are things that, that we do all the time that we don't necessarily pay attention to, much like tying our shoes, you want to become aware of them. And then I'll give you, I'll give you some like, good examples for me on how I like, like am, become aware of discomfort and then manage it. It's like, um, this, is, this is kind of an awful example, but I just saw my mom. I love my mom. Mom, if you're watching, I love you. We're friends. Um, but my, my mom, um, be, hanging out with my mom, uh, increases my blood pressure. Um, the things she says, the things she does, I am stressed, uh, have anxiety well, when I'm around her. So the, you know, the feeling of stress is, is associated with the time that I spend with my mom, my mom. And to manage that, to create a, to, 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 to take care of the stress that I feel when I'm around her, like I mentally prepare for when we go on a date, like we'll go out to get our nails done or something like that. So I'll, I'll go for a walk, I'll, I'll, I'll be calm, I'll just think of gratitude, all the things I love about my mom, and then we'll go spend time together, and I'm more, I'm more ready for, the, uh, uh, for the, the, the stress that I feel as her son. And uh, again, mom, you're watching, I love you, and I love being your son, very glad that I am your son, um, but I do sometimes feel some stress around that. So. And the reason why I picked that out is because a lot of times it's not, temp it's not, it's not just temperature, it's not just relationships, it's a confluence of things. And only through a lot of therapy and journaling was I able to figure out like why I was so anxious and then create an environment and change the environment to modify or to, to make it easier on me when I was spending time with my mom. And, and that's basically the, what we're doing with the thermostat like you're changing the environment so you don't get uncomfortable, right? So if you are journaling about your food, so if you're eating ice cream, you're drinking a, a, a what's the thing at Wendy's, the ice, Frosty? Yeah, so you're, you're drinking a Frosty at Wendy's, or you're eating a Wendy's Frosty, you wanna write down like uh, what time of day it is, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, um, where you're going, and then, Sometimes, like you're going to or from work, it's actually you have to walk it back and see what you were doing two hours before or three hours before, eight, six hours before, or even the night before. So sometimes these, like the stresses catch up with us a little bit. Uh, sometimes the triggers are a little bit earlier in the chain. It's not just like a one for one. Something like the temperature is really obvious because we feel that and then we change. But um, other times, it's not as obvious. And maybe you have like a high pressure meeting that you have to run. And so you're really amped up about that. So to calm your nerves, you had a frosty for lunch or uh, you had some other, uh, uh, some other event in your life that you're preparing for. And you know, you're, you're, you're pre-gaming, if you will, for, for the junk food and the emotional eating. But here's the key. Willpower, like, Thinking, of, thinking to yourself, I like this frosty analogy because it's so specific. Now, but thinking about, okay, so I just will not have a frosty tomorrow at lunch. I'm just gonna have my you know, turkey breast instead or my chicken breast instead. So thinking about willpower and using that to avoid the, or, or to override the, the impulse uh, that you're having for emotional eating, that's, that's probably not gonna work. And I say probably because there's been studies done. What, what you're doing is you're not changing the discomfort. So you're not addressing the original discomfort that's creating the need for the behavior change of the action. So 
the, the thermostat does change the temperature of the air so that you are no longer cold. T putting a sweatshirt on does change the, uh, ch changes your, the temperature of your skin so that you're no longer cold. But if you just will yourself to like sit in the, you know, sit in a cold room, you'll continue to be cold and your willpower will erode completely away. And then you will go, once your willpower is gone, then you'll go, you'll go get a blanket, you'll go put on a hoodie, or you'll, you'll change the temperature because nobody can sit in an ice cold room forever. And the degree of the stress and the discomfort is gonna be directly proportionate to the behavior and how long you can hold out. So the fastest way to interrupt emotional eating or to change any habit for that matter, is to figure out what the in initial impetus of discomfort is and address it directly. So in the, in the case of this frosty thing for my big presentation at work, when I feel anxious about the upcoming presentation, then instead of getting a frosty or not getting a frosty or even addressing the frosty problem at all, write down why, like, like what, is it, what is it about the presentation that's like stressing me out? So I'll say like, oh, I don't like talking in front of people. Okay, well, um, uh, do, you, do I really know my material? Do I have a, a strong message? Do, am I clear about my points that I'm trying to make? And then when I start to voice out all of my fears and concerns on, on that journal, on that, on that page, it'll become really clear whether or not I'm prepared, whether or not, like, if I'm not prepared, what to do next. And then I can address directly that anxiety that I'm having that's causing me to want to use another behavior. So journaling is a boring answer to the question of how do I get around this emotional eating thing, but somehow, some way, we have to address the problem directly. Because if the answer was, oh, well, I'll just intermittent fast and I won't have a chance to uh, have dessert because I'm done eating at 2 p.m., cool, but you're still gonna be stressed out at 2 p.m. Or you're still gonna, be, you're still gonna have that same those same irritants. And in my case, um, as I, I have a, a, a lot of anxiety in my life that I manage through various ways, a lot of fitness, a lot of other stuff. But if I, if I, have, a, um, if I have a very low barrier, like I love coffee, it's very comforting. But if I stopped drinking coffee during the day uh, to, and, and, and didn't have that as a habit, as a comforting behavior to alleviate some of my discomfort, I would probably replace it with vodka. Like, the amount of pressure builds up. It doesn't go away when you switch, you know, you, when you cut out a behavior, right? You still have that pressure. So for me, I want to continually work on the things that are discomforts in my life so that I can drink less and less coffee and I have less and less stimulants, and, but not worry about necessarily managing directly the amount of caffeine that I, I have. I'm trying to think up the problem tree a little bit. And changing the environment is the fastest and most consistent way to create long-term behavioral change. So if you're a junk food person, you, keep the, you don't have junk food at home. If you're an alcohol person, you don't have alcohol at home. If you are uh, a video game person like I am, you don't have video games on my, on my work computer. I can't, I can't do that. Once you change out the environment, you take willpower out of the equation and out of the uh, process, now I don't have to choose, and I can just do the things in front of me that alleviate my stress and discomfort. And if I'm not, that I clearly don't understand completely what I'm stressed about, and I need to do some more work around becoming self-aware, so I stop having these reactive, um, sort, of, sort of explosive uh, uh, outbursts, whether it's, you know, for me, the outburst would be drinking a pot of coffee, but you know, you're, you, you can insert whatever it is for you in there. So, <clears throat> changing your environment and, uh, and addressing the discomfort directly are the two most important and quickest ways to solve the problem for good. And there's a lot of fun strategies on how to make habits less appealing or more appealing to try and curb behavior change. But the number one thing is awareness. Because if you're aware of what it is that you're doing or what it is that you're, the discomfort that you're feeling and what it is that you're doing to alleviate it, well, you can address the discomfort or you can substitute out a, uh, a different habit. I know a lot of smokers who were able to uh, substitute smoking for chewing sunflower seeds, which is equally as disgusting as we all know. But 
at least they do not have, at least they're not walking around with a carton of cigarettes and smelling like an ashtray. They just have a, uh, a Pepsi bottle full of sunflower seeds, which for some reason is the vehicle that they want to carry there now. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but what I do know is it's better than smoking. Okay, so step one, figure out like self-awareness. What is happening before the behavior? What is the discomfort in the environment? You're, what's the temperature change that you're trying to address with that emotional eating? And I would say probably the, the more consistent or more potent the, the food, the more dramatic or the more intense the feelings and the more questions you gotta ask yourself to, to, to dig it up. Once you know what the discomfort is, then you can begin to work on addressing the discomfort. And that is, that, that could be complex because depending on your personality type or what it is, it could require a little bit or, or a lot of work. In the meantime, you could substitute with a healthier behavior so that you're not, you're not ignoring your discomfort, you're, gen, you're gradually relieving it over time, and you're adjusting the behavior along the way. <sighs> okay, that was, that was emotional eating. I, don't know why I had to talk about my mom. I guess I just saw her and she was on my mind. But if you have a mom, then you know it's like to be stressed out by a mom. So there you go. Um, what I want to do now is, um, one, open it for question and answers because that was a, kind of a specific example. If you have a real life example you want to share, I'd happy to like dig into the process and like where to start. Or if you have general questions on implementation, love to, to talk about it and, um, and get some get some action generated. So if you'd like to pose a question, you can unmute yourself. Reba. Is this academic or are you uh, are you working on habits? Um no, I'm <laughs> I'm working on habits. Months. Yeah, can't hear you, Reba. I hope you're. Oh, you can't. You can't hear me. Oh, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. No, I'm working on habits. Uh, okay. Uh, did any of that resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've got, I've got my own, definitely got my own triggers of things that like after work and my my comfort foods and things I always go for. Yeah. Trying to change those habits after a stressful day. Uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's it's a good message. Well, and the and the key is is like it's not that you can't have comfort, you know. I think it like it's important to just know, like you know, exchange it for something that's closer to to your goals. You know, mm -hmm. if you're um, like it's. A glass of red wine is really nice, you know, after work. And uh, as long as you're, it fits your macros and it's not gonna, and it doesn't get in your way, it doesn't bother you, I think that's great. Um, and for me, like I drink, I'm drinking caffeine right now, which I should not be doing, but um, I really like it, so. <laughs> um, I, I had something to add. Um, if I can. Um, so when I started at TFW a little over a year ago, um, my main deal was um, the work stress that I was under. So working is skipping breakfast because I'd done that for years and um, working through lunch and then getting to getting to a point where I was just, you know, hit a brick wall, I have to absolutely eat something and not having, um, you know, going for the convenience of fast food. And so that became the comfort food because that was the cycle. It's like, you know, no food, work stress and, and um, dive into the, the spicy chicken sandwich and, uh, French fries, <laughs> um, and and it was and it, like that was the cycle, and it it took like the the big change of of 
going to work, you know, joining the gym and, and making this big commitment because there, there was like they needed to break that cycle. Um, I think um, the slow changes over the course of what, 18 months um, has, has really helped prepare me for, you know, the, what's, what's going on now. Um, the, uh, you know, because I still work at the same place. I still have the same work stress. I still have, um, you know, it's, it's still, there, there are no new convenient, healthy places to, to go eat. It's, it's the same old spicy chicken sandwich or roast beef sandwich or <laughs> drive through um, so yeah like it it is it is tougher to um, you know stay on meal prep which is I think one of the things that we've been talking about the last couple of weeks um, but um, you know I, I haven't quite picked up old bad habits so um but i i do notice that i i am um you know i'll forget to eat breakfast because i'm rushing around or i'll forget to have my morning snack and so like and then like just getting back on track is um really important when that happens yeah, and um, one of the things that, um, you know, stri struck me about what you're saying is that <clears throat> the, the, the timing, right, like the, you'd get off work and then you'd have a pressure release at TFW and, you know, I don't know if that was around like the same time that you would uh, go get the spicy chicken sandwich or not, but it's nice when there is like a, and like something like commuting to a gym and then going through like a, what is if you've done any of the workouts in the last month, you know, it's an emotional journey as you go through your training. And so like, and then you, you, you come out on the other side and you'll literally, the chemistry in your brain has changed. You, 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 you have broken the state that you were in when you were in the habit loop. Now you're in a different state. And so that those discomforts don't no longer apply because that unconscious habit reaction was only to fix that environment that you were in and that discomfort that you're feeling in the moment and then when that's gone then the, so gives the incentive to do the habit at least it's not automatically incentivized now again if you go have a frosty there's some dopamine that's going to get released in that but um but that's a big one like you know you're taking a high pressure situation then you're going through a big you know uh physical transformation in that day and that's really changing the chemistry um and like I, I love I love exercise is a great example because it's so specific, and, and and I think of exercise so or too often in increments of like an hour of training, right? But if you just have a rope and you just skip rope for four minutes, you get a dose of endorphins, you get a dose of um, uh, adrenaline, you get a dose of uh, dopamine, you get a dose of positive hormones that again uh interrupt any cycle that you're in and if you were experiencing emotional discomfort literally that emotional discomfort is gone the stimuli is still there your environment hasn't you know you haven't changed your life but you the discomfort is gone for that moment but because and then this is where you start to really look at like you could have a spreadsheet if anybody people are numbers the marginal benefit of skipping rope for four minutes versus the marginal cost of having a frosty and like how they'll compound over time as the deficit and the, the damage that you do yourself with that frosty versus the positive compounding interest of that four, four minutes of skipping rope, you have a completely different set of outcomes in 10 years, but you're gonna notice a difference in like a month or two months or three months, but then 10 years, that's gonna be a dramatic difference. So, um, yeah, sorry, good. A bunch of good points, Miranda. I do like to rant. Um, did anybody, anybody else have a, a, like a specific example or a question or a strategy that they wanted to talk about? So 
I'm going to wax a little bit more on like changing your environment just real quick, because this one is something that it's, I take for granted being that I, along with Bootsy, own training for warriors. And if there's anything about the environment that I don't like, I can just change it. Like I can move a fridge up here if I want my meals closer to me, you know, I, um, we can, you know, make our own coffee right there. So I don't even have to leave to get super caffeinated. Um, but you know, things like, um, putting like making healthy food and doing meal prep, like Miranda was talking about, but having that at your office or having a snack in your car, like an apple or these little tiny things that having in your environment. Well, when you feel discomfort, or you feel hungry or you feel, um, a certain way and you have this thing that you already know you need to eat towards your goals, back to that compounding interest. If you have those things within arm's reach, you are, are, are taking steps forward and you're interrupting the habit pattern and you're, you're creating these long-term changes with these micro activities that are just, just to interrupt uh, your emotional eating or the, the habit that you're trying to kick. And so the, the more you, the time you spend, even making a list, what could I add or subtract to my environment to make the most dramatic difference? You know, um, if you're in an office where someone always brings donuts, so there's always donuts, you know, like how can you create distance between you and the donuts? You know, how can you create like commitment barriers? For instance, like whenever I'm trying to change uh, my, my own habits or behaviors, I'll tell Bootsy like, hey, I'm trying to not have any junk food. And so what she does is she stands over my desk like a gargoyle. And then if I like have like a yogurt covered pretzel, she screams at me and she starts cackling in laughter because she wants to see me fail. And I don't want to give her that pleasure so that I put the pretzel back. So if you have somebody like that in your office who cares about you that much, who wants to like see that you succeed um, and, and, and stand over you like a gargoyle, that would be, uh, that would be a really easy, you know, a great, accountability partner but setting it up physically in your environment so it's it kind of interrupting the pattern that you're trying to avoid um and then you know you can you can you can make that uh, more specific to the behavior you're working on so if you're trying not to drink you know meet your friends at bars um or if you're you know trying to only eat your meal prep food then always making sure that you eat your meal before you go out to see your friends that you're always on plan and then you're you're, you're just basically you're laying out all the positive bricks in front of you so they're easy to step on and then you have to step off the path to then get into, into trouble. And that's sort of the more you can automate the behaviors that you want, the more the brain and body will work for you. And the more you rely on will, the, the harder it's going to be to succeed. Whew. Viviana, I saw you. You were curled up in a blankie. Are you okay? Are you sick? I'm fine. Just cold. <laughs> that was a good metaphor then. That was a good analogy for our story. I know. I thought you started, you were using that story because you saw me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have air conditioning on? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm too tired to get up and turn it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's a blanket on my couch. <laughs> this that is awesome. Work. I'm not cold anymore. I'm comfortable. That's right. She has addressed her discomfort. Exactly. <laughs> Solution in place. Um, I would just like to make a disclaimer, in, 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 to which point Josh has never put down a, a yogurt covered pretzel and or a dozen donuts and nor would I go near that bear's jaws <laughs> to say don't eat that thing. <laughs> Josh, I just want to say just to readdress your frosty from earlier. <laughs> Shut up. No way. What? You don't have a frosty in there though. That looks like a soda. It is. Uh, same with um, with spicy chicken nuggets earlier. <laughs> wow, you are the presentation, Viviana. <laughs> Wait a second. You're cold and you're drinking a frost <laughs> in an air-conditioned apartment? <laughs> Don't try to bring logic into this conversation. <laughs> Not what we're here for, Josh. 
I feel like this is going to become an intervention. Are you strung out on heroin? <laughs> <laughs> it's emotional eating, Josh. This is why we're here. This is why we're here. Yeah. Yeah. For a reason. <laughs> you guys really just gave me dinner ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it, Viviana. No. I already had spicy chicken, but I think someone mentioned cake or something. <laughs> Major T, uh, are you an emotional eater? Not really, kind of more like M M Miranda was talking about with like not eating or just, I think just trying to figure out that balance in my life. Um, Cause I, a lot of times I just get so caught up. Like today I didn't even eat lunch until like three in the afternoon. Um, cause I was just so caught up with stuff, like working on stuff. And before I know it, I look at the clock and I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't, you know, even eaten. And so I, I guess it's kind of like the opposite. I mean, I guess like with emotional eating, I guess it could be like emotional, like not eating too. Um, you know, and, and just trying to figure out like balance in my life and like, Hey, you know what, you know, how, how do I kind of make my environment so that I'm you know, maybe setting an alarm or something like, hey, okay, I need to stop and take a break and, you know, and eat a snack or eat something healthy. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, so I, I, alarms are really good. Um, Miranda and I were talking about the uh, Pomodoro work timer. And um, I'm somebody who, uh, same thing, but I, like in, in the gym, I, I don't know when, um, I know, I know exactly when too much training is occurring and, and what my nervous system feels like. I don't have that same thing with work. I'll work a lot and I'll be like, I'm fine. And I'll go home and I'll pass out like, like mm -hmm. on the floor and not even make it to the bed. And then, or, uh, or like, it'll be like dinner time and I'll, it'll be like eight 30 and I got to go to bed. So instead of like having like, you know, a chicken and quinoa, you know, and an avocado, I'll just have a case of beer. So whatever it is, like, so by setting the alarm and the, and the timer, you mm -hmm. give yourself an automated outside of your control uh, cue, and then you can start to see how good that feels. And then you can start to recalibrate how your internal clock is working. And then like, oh, my hunger cues don't show up, but I'm really hungry. You know, you start to eat and you're like, oh, I'm really hungry at two o'clock. Or it's like, okay, I need to eat, but I'm not really hungry, so I'm going to need to hold on to these reminders. It's good stuff, warriors. All right, warriors, it's 646. Time for everybody to eat protein, except for <laughs> Viviana, because she already ate a bunch of it. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.